So you're watching this video because your shading sucks, or you just don't know how to shade. Now shading is important because it shows the light and the darkness, it really brings out the depth in your image, and uh, most importantly, just makes your image look better. I, I don't know what to say. I, I think everything needs shading. So in this video, I will teach you all of that today. So let's get into it. This person does not understand how shadows and light works, shading without considering where the light is coming from and how it creates shadows, turning the illustration into a confusing mess of random shadows that make no sense. This person is very, very sloppy, not paying attention to the order of their lines, creating a chaotic, inconsistent mess of lines that leaves the work of art looking amateurish. Yay! <laughs> This person exerts too much energy into every single line, to the point where the lines are too bold and mechanical, sucking the life out of the illustration. So I'm gonna break this video into two parts. The first part is how to avoid all of those common mistakes so you don't end up making the same mistakes as those dummies that you saw earlier. The second part of this video, I'm gonna show you guys some different shading styles and techniques that you could apply to your own work. So let's get into it. So as we saw in the first example, one of the common ways to mess up is by not considering where the light is coming from in your image. Okay, everything has a shadow, everything has a light and a dark side. And uh, you know, some people, they forget about that and they just think that shading just goes everywhere. Okay, so the first thing that you should do before you even start a drawing or you know, before you put any of the shading down is figure out exactly where the light is coming from. Sometimes, I know a lot of artists, I like to go from straight from above. That makes it very easy. That means that everything on the low side here is shaded and everything up here is lighter. You kind of go from dark to light and make it a gradient. So let's say for example here, you know, we'll have a couple different uh, shapes to kind of give an example of how different objects work with each other. Let's say our light source is coming from this direction. It's hitting everything every object and so from there what you want to do is that means that all the light is going to hit these edges first this edge this edge this edge so that means what it's going to hit last is this part down here so this part will have to be shaded this will have to be shaded this so all of that so you know you kind of want to start off by just doing your darkest layer first and just keep on layer just keep on laying on top of that pretty simple and that's all you gotta do. And that's how you keep your shading consistent with the light source. Uh, and it just makes it overall more realistic because, you know, as humans living on this earth, like most of us, there's a law, there's like a law of physics or I don't know, law of light where, you know, all, all the shadows are gonna make sense on everything. So, you know, if it's off in your image, people are gonna just notice like inherently they might not even know what's wrong with the image necessarily but they'll know something's wrong because you know everything is you know maybe you it's discombobulated you shaded over here for some reason even though light source is coming this way and it just doesn't make as much sense and, and usually you know you could go as abstract or as whatever as you want but i don't know I, I think it's important especially when you're shading to just you know consider the light source i mean obviously this depends on what your style is at the same time the second mistake that you want to avoid is having sloppy lines. You don't want to be that sloppy, disgusting slob that we saw uh, in the previous example. A lot of people when they're starting off, maybe they're not really paying attention to the consistency of their lines. And there's many ways to fix that. The first one is just pay more attention, okay? Every line should be pretty uniform with each other when it comes to shading. I mean, look, they're all the same distance, you see that? Or at least really close to the same distance. That's keeping a uniform style, all right? And then, you know, on top of that, we could now add another layer of lines. And that uniform look and this, you know, the even spacing between all the lines is gonna bring a lot of consistency to the illustration. And the more consistency that you have in your drawing, the better it'll look and people won't notice errors. And that's the thing is that you have to do all this work so people don't notice things that you've intentionally worked your ass off to make sure that they didn't notice it. Having uniform lines like this definitely helps. Or maybe if you're someone that stipples, uh, I, I guess it doesn't really matter if your dots are organized or not. I, I think with stippling, it's actually a lot easier. I guess I'm, I'm talking more specifically about your line width. Make sure that everything is organized. And you know, you can uh, do cool shading things where you have lines intersecting and going different ways like this. Or you know, you could have them stacked on top of each other. This is cross hatching. We'll get into that later where they intersect like that. But even here, you see that I messed up. You don't want like a random curvy line in between all of your straight lines. It's just not gonna look right. So yeah, 
just make sure that you're, you get good at spacing. And over time, as, as you get better at it, you could also get faster, and then you become really efficient at shading super fast like this. All right, on to the next thing. So the next character is, he's a, he's a bit much. You want to avoid just pressing down too hard on the paper. Okay, a lot, a lot of people when they're starting off, they like to just, okay, I have to get the straightest line as possible. How are we going to do this? Okay, let's just go slow and steady and just... <sighs> Look at that. Oh, the line's coming out good. I got I to gotta keep the pen to the paper. Just got to keep it glued down there. Because if I pick it up, that leaves room for error. And, you know, they, and then they make a mistake like that. Here's the secret. It's, it's not about having the pen to the paper and ooh, all that stuff, okay? It's the art of gliding. It's the art of just being graceful. A swan flying over a lake, coming towards you, bites your ear off. What are you gonna do now? That's why you need to learn how to glide on the paper. Gliding is really easy. Instead of just going like that, it might take a little practice, but you just See, I'm like barely touching the paper. Now, you know, at the same time, you can see that the lines are uh, not as bold. However, I, I always think it's a good thing to not overdo things. You kind of want to underdo things so you always have room to kind of build on it. Because once you overdo it, it's kind of hard to go back, especially when you're shading with pen and ink, uh, like how I do a lot of the times. So, you know, just by gliding where the pen touches the paper and where it releases, that's where there's the least amount of pressure on there. This will also save your pen tips from wearing out so fast lines and you know the beautiful thing about this too is that they don't seem as mechanical they seem more human because it's almost like you know there's it's marks it's more graceful you could tell on the lines you know that they're they weren't forced you know it was almost it was almost put on there naturally and that's kind of what you want to achieve with your shading style i, I think that's kind of what helps an artist work go from beginner level up to uh you know an expert level or someone that's been doing it for many years or you know they're just like oh look at this uh line work here it looks like a well-seasoned veteran um but yeah on to the next one all right and the last common mistake you don't want to make is just making sure that uh, you're, you're not so black and white. You wanna be able to create gradients because you don't see many just absolute hard shadows with just straight black and then straight white. It's, it's kind of, you know, a mix. It's this nice flow that goes from black to dark gray to gray to light gray to white all the way through. So when shading an image, let's put a circle here, a circle here. Okay, maybe the first person, they're just gonna shade, I don't know, my pen can't be going out now, I need this for like four more drawings. The first person might just go like this. And there's too much of a contrast between the dark and the light. You need something to kind of break apart and just make it smoother and easier on the eyes. Now, obviously, some people have developed styles where this kind of shading is acceptable. Um, but if you're trying to learn how to draw in a more realistic way or something that kind of relates to reality in a sense, you don't want to do this necessarily. What you would rather do is, you know, again, start off the same way. You got your lines here, right? Then you do another layer of lines. But as I'm layering up, I'm putting less and less lines and you make a gradient. You know, it goes from dark to dark gray to like light to just like that. I mean, obviously this is a very sloppy way of showing you. I'm kind of breaking my organized lines rule that I just told you guys, but I think you get the gist. You don't have to worry about anything moving forward here. Frog. So I'm going to show you guys a few different styles of shading that I've learned over the years from some of my favorite artists. Now I'm not going to go super in depth on all of these, I'm just going to give you guys the basics of the different things that you could try out when uh, shading an image, and also some artists that you guys should check out if you want to learn more about a particular shading style. So let's get into it. Now there's two kinds of line shading um, that are very popular, and the ones that I know, I don't know any other ones really. One of them is called hatching. Hatching is basically just like this, where all the lines are going one direction. They're all uniform, all pointing the same way, and you know you could stack as many of these lines on top of each other to make it as, as dark or as light as you want to. Pretty simple, right? Now there's a second kind of shading. This one is called cross hatching. Cross hatching is basically the same as hatching where you have a bunch of uniform lines, but you also have lines intersecting with it. So they're also going this way. But you don't have to have it just going this way and that way. You could also have it going a third way, like this. And if you want, maybe a fourth way. Some people, when they do cross hatching, depending on you know, if it's a dark shadow, they'll have more lines intersecting. Uh, you know, where it's a bit lighter, they'll have less intersections between the lines. So, you know, maybe right here, there's only one intersection between like two groups of lines here because it's like a medium. But if it's really dark, it's like four different intersecting lines to make it like almost straight black. And then over here, where it's almost light, it's just maybe it's just one and then it goes. 
those into uh, some kind of, I don't know. I don't know what this, whatever. But, all right, you guys got the gist of that shading. The next one is really simple. This one is called stippling. Stippling is basically, instead of lines, dots. There's not many things you could do with a pen. You're kind of limited to lines and dots. So the other way of shading is just dots like this. And you know, obviously where it's darker, you concentrate more dots into one area. And where it's lighter, they're a bit more sparse and spread out, and it makes this kind of thing. But you know, if you just keep going, like how I am, you can make it work. Personally, this is not my favorite style of shading because I prefer lines. I, I think because it goes faster for me and it feels like, I don't know, the stippling to me feels the same as like, it's like dropping grains of sand one at a time. Like, I don't know, it gets on my nerves pretty fast, but I know a lot of really talented artists that use this method. Um, so, you know, don't take it for granted. Use it if you need to. But then there's other things that you do outside of these kinds of shading. I mean, you could also do uh, like just blocking the whole image out. So let's say we have like a some kind of rock here with like an eyeball on it. I don't know. Don't judge it. I'm just coming up with this on the spot. But maybe you don't want these kinds of styles. So what you could do is you could just black it out. You just go straight black. There's no lines, no gradients. It's just very hard. It just just like that. But you know, there's there's many different kinds. But then there's another kind that I use, this is probably the one that I use the most. And the one that gives me the most, uh, not only like depth, but like just like textures in general. And this is where I take the hatching style from here. And instead we, uh, instead of having straight lines, curved lines. This kind of shading style I use a lot in my cloud illustrations. Um, and I would highly recommend this to uh, anyone that is doing clouds, uh, at least to try out. But you know, you could do them really sparse like this, or you could have them layered on top of each other like this right here. Either way, you know, you're, you're getting a very interesting effect and you kind of, you know, especially if you're drawing a face, uh, I find this method to kind of work the best because you could kind of work with the outline of uh, whatever you're shading. So let's say, for example, we got this face here for using this kind of like curved hatching. The lines are gonna be curved like that. The lines are gonna be curved this way to put in the cheekbone. Also, I use a little bit of dots too. Maybe it gets smaller as it goes in. There's a lot of different things you can do with the lengths of the lines. I don't know, there's just a lot of experimenting, just like that. And you know, I could also layer the lines even more to bring more depth in. The more that I layer the lines, the more depth it'll give. Sometimes I've had whole images where the entire face is just covered in lines, but because they're all going the, like in accordance, all the lines are going in the same direction, or the direction that it needs to in accordance with the outline of the face, it all seems to work out. But yeah, those are those are the different ways you can do it. Um, different artists that I recommend is, I, I guess for some of this cross-hatching stuff, I've noticed, uh, I believe uh, Jim Lee uses that a lot. There's a lot of American comic book artists that use a cross-hatching style. Another artist who's really talented at shading, another comic book artist, his name is uh, Frank Miller. I believe he illustrated the first series of Wolverine. Um, he has a very, very interesting shading style where it's not really too heavy on, some, actually, it's, some of his panels are very heavy on lines and other ones it's just this blocking of shadows and with no lines. So I would definitely check his work out and there's many artists out there. Uh, I know a lot of people, they play talking about Kentaro Miria, I believe that's his name. So I was working a couple times, that guy, also an amazing shader. Uh, you know, it's a lot of just like looking at what those artists are doing and comparing it to your own work and seeing, uh, you know, what are the flaws in yours that they don't have and how to strive to get closer to what they do. But yeah, I would definitely check those artists out. If you want someone who is really good at these kind of more curved style lines, I would definitely check out the artist Mobius. He used a lot of these curved lines, very interesting comic book artist slash just psychedelic artist of some kind. I, I don't know how to even, you know, what kind of style he falls into. Another person who is really good at doing these curve lines are actually on YouTube, Peter Draws. Shout out to Peter. If it wasn't for him, I probably wouldn't be shading like, be shading the way that I do today. But yeah, I mean, you know, my shading isn't perfect by any means, but over the last 12 years that I've been drawing every day, obviously I've learned a lot from all of these uh, different artists that I've closely followed um, and admired, um, and there's just a lot to learn there. So yeah, I guess that's all I gotta say about this, this shading stuff. But Cody, I just finished your video and I tried out all the techniques that you showed me and guess what? My art still sucks. My shading still sucks. I didn't learn anything.
Well, guess what? Change doesn't happen overnight. The one thing that you should take away from this video, if you somehow didn't, you know, get any of this, this any of this information didn't collect into your head, the one thing that you should take away is to be consistent. If you're, if, if you are consistent, you're not going to get really anywhere. You need to be practicing these things every day. Any technique that you want to learn outside of shading, outside of even artwork, anything that you want to learn, you need to stay consistent at and try every day. Give effort every single day into learning something and improving and trying to improve upon the day before. Because if, if you do that, then you'll actually get somewhere. So don't expect, you know, this to just magically, you know, change the way you draw just from the first line that you put down. You're like, oh, just watch the Cody video, get the pen out. Oh my God. It's not going to work like that. It's going to take some time. You have to have patience. There's no such thing as shortcuts. Got it? So if you do this every day, or you just have a consistent effort where you're trying and trying on a daily basis, you'll get somewhere. But yeah, anyways, thank you for watching this video. If you wanna see more tutorials from my perspective, uh, feel free to check out this video on uh, oh, how to draw original characters or this video on how to draw your feelings and emotions. And I have a bunch of other ones, so definitely just check out the channel. Feel free to subscribe if you want to support in any way. Check out the link in the description to synthetic.shop. Uh, that also has the original artwork. Um, and you can also find my other socials on there. But yeah, thank you guys for watching. Let me know uh, what you guys think of this video. If you love it or you hate it, how would you rate it? That's it. Penis out.